Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. All right. Hey, so you guys are in for a treat this morning. we got a guy named David Lawrence here. Pastor Marks has known him for quite a while, and I don't know him, so I'm super excited. Uh, it's, it's always awkward when you get asked to introduce somebody you've, you just met like five minutes before. So I'm going to read his bio, which is usually against me. Y'all know I don't like reading stuff off of a thing, but I'm going to read my teleprompter. <laughs> David Lawrence is a dynamic communicator, minister, and business owner who is passionate about developing leaders. I like that and equipping others to move forward in their life's purpose. He has ministered in 30 nations around the world, speaking at churches, Bible schools, crusades, pastors' conferences, and business seminars. He's a certified John Maxwell leadership coach, the president of Renew International, and is the owner of a consulting business called Empower Resource Group. David advises real estate investment companies, philanthropic and faith, I think that's supposed to say faith-based organizations, on best strategies, plans, and systems to raise capital for large-scale projects. He's a graduate of ORU, yeah, or Roberts University in Tulsa. Dave and his wife, Liz, she's here too, uh, has been happily married for 11 years and reside in Austin, Texas with their dog, Bauer. You guys give a warm Crossroads welcome to Dave Wallace. Awesome. How's everyone doing? Wow, it is... uh, it is such an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. We, uh, we love your pastors, uh, pastors Marcus and Natalie. We, we got to meet them about, it was about a year ago, year and a half ago, through some mutual friends that are just a dynam- dynamic couple themselves. And, and um, we just, uh, Pastor Marcus, we had coffee, um, I think about maybe eight months, a year ago as well. And we just, hit, it's always great when you connect with like-minded people. There's so many people in the world you can connect with that are just weird. Um, <laughs> but when you connect with like-minded people, like, things just happen. And so, uh, so I, we just love the heart of your pastors. Um, you know, I travel all the time. And when, so when you walk into different atmospheres, you feel things. And when you walk into this house, you just feel warmth. You feel energy. You feel that God is, God is doing something special in this house. And so, and that just goes to show you have, an amaz- you have amazing pastors. So give a hand for your pastors if you can. Um, so we're, we're, I'm excited to be here today, especially on one of the best Sundays of the year, Pentecost Sunday. I love Pentecost Sunday because I think every Sunday should be Pentecost Sunday. Um, I, I, I just... Uh, I grew up in, 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 a, in a background that where I was just I raised, was raised on the mission field, really, and so I saw all kinds of fun and uh, crazy, good, amazing, miraculous things, and um, and I just I love ministering on on this Sunday because I believe there's something that the Holy Spirit wants to do in us to empower us to be what God has called us to be in everyday life, in an everyday world, in the marketplace, in our homes, in every environment. He sends us into. And so I want to start out with this verse you want to throw up on the screen on Acts chapter chapter 4. And um, Acts chapter 4, verse 29. That's Acts 1, but that's a great verse too. We'll get to that. But uh, Acts chapter 4, I'll just read it here. It says, and now they're at it again. It's a great way to start it off. And now they're at it again. It feels like the last couple of years, and now they're at it again. More fear, more intimidation, more gaslighting. Now, more, more uh, just fear being thrown at. I think there's like another thing they're trying to push out called money pox or monkey pox or what, I don't know. They're at it again. But, they say, but they're, um, the writing here says, take care of their threats and give your servants Fearless confidence in preaching your message. As you stretch out your hand to us in healings and miracles and wonders to be done in the name of your holy servant Jesus. While they were praying, the place where they were meeting trembled and shook. Underline that if you have your Bibles, trembled and shook. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak God's word again with fearless confidence. Underline that word, fearless confidence. This is the message translation, so if you don't have the message translation, you can go back and look look at it there. But I love that fearless confidence. 
I believe a lot of us today are needing to step into a higher realm of fearless confidence. Because with everything happening in society today, there is something that is trying to push the believer back. There is something that's trying to push or or kind of shun voices to be quiet and silent. And I believe there's something that God wants to encourage us here today to step into a higher realm of fearless confidence. The key to a fearless life is becoming a fearless church, and it's through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It's what I call the great advantage. The Holy Spirit is the great advantage. So we're going to be talking today about the person of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people today um, that, that have, you know, they're in different places in their walk with God. But to be quite honest, as I've traveled and especially just the season of life that we're in, I don't know how people can get, get, can get by in life without the Holy Spirit. I really don't. I don't say that to be like, you know, whatever. I just, I really, I really don't. Because there is something that there is an advantage by walking in the Holy Spirit, having him being empowered by the Holy Spirit that we have in our life. I remember when I was a student at, at ORU, and my dean of the, um, I was a business major, and the dean of uh, the School of Business at the time, I was taking one of his classes called Creative Thinking in Business. I, I, it was one of my favorite classes because he would throw up a big problem to solve. He's like, all right, solve it creatively. How are you going to get out of this mess? Figure it out. And so uh, we started doing that. But one, one thing he, he, he said unto us that I will never forget, it stuck with me for all these years. He says, in the marketplace... When you are in tune with the, with the leading of the Holy Spirit, it is seriously one of your greatest competitive advantages. It is one of your, like one of your competitive um, advantages by walking with the Holy Spirit. He will lead you and tell you, hire that person or don't hire that person. He will lead and tell you, take that opportunity, run from that opportunity. He will lead and tell you how to step in and pursue a deal. He will tell you to walk away from it as fast as you can. And this is the the great advantage that we have because he is there to walk with us, empower us, and guide us. Jesus actually, uh, actually has some words to describe the Holy Spirit. He talks about the Holy Spirit in three different, and when you look at three different translations, he talks about the Holy Spirit being the the counselor. Or the guide. He talks about the Holy Spirit being the great comforter. And he talks about the Holy Spirit being the spirit of truth. When I think about those three words, the counselor or the guide, the comforter, and the spirit of truth, we need all three of those operating and filling our life in everyday life. We need the great uh, the, the counselor and the guide. There's sometimes I don't know which direction to, to take. I can have my friends and my community and people in my world, hey, pray for me. I don't, you know, I I have these type of things I got to figure out. I got these type of, I got solution A, B, and C, or I have no solution. Like, I need the guide to, to, to guide me, to direct me. And then there's sometimes life just happens, and it's ugly, and it's painful, and we need the comforter of the Holy Spirit. We need him to come in and comfort us. We need his presence to fill us. We need him to come in and, and just take over the atmosphere. We need the comforter. And then we need the spirit of truth. Because there's so much deception out there. There's so much weirdness out there. There's so many false doctrines out there. There's so much weird things. You can just get on social media for five minutes and, and start believing weirdness. But Jesus says the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. He leads us into all, not some, not part, but all truth. So we need all three. And there's a beautiful thing of the Holy Spirit. He is, those all, he is all three. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we are feeding ourselves in the word of God to where we are allowing him to minister to us within all three. In John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. 
In John 16, 13, it says, but he, the spirit of truth, comes and he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. Acts 1, verse 4 says, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. I find it interesting, even right after the resurrection, these disciples, they, saw, they witnessed the resurrection. They ate with Jesus. They, they, they spent time with Jesus. They fished with Jesus. They, 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 had, they followed him for three and a half years, saw the crucifixion, the resurrection, and even saw him ascend into, he, into heaven. And Jesus even commissioned them to go and do the great commission. And then he said, wait. He said, wait. It's like, what, what, what more is there to see? What more is there to, to witness? Well, we've, we've been with you for three and a half years. I mean, you rose from the dead. Now you're saying to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. We're ready to go, locked and loaded. Actually, you're not locked and loaded yet. You need to go and you need to wait until I send my spirit upon you. Here's the thing. As followers of Jesus, you could be... You could be spending time with Jesus, reading his word, but you may not be that effective in carrying out his message because you're not walking in the power he has called you to walk in. There is a power that he wants you to walk in in everyday life. So when you move in, when you're in the marketplace, there's been so many times where I've been sitting across the table with clients. I'm telling you, the marketplace is the, my most favorite mission field. It's actually better than actually preaching behind pulpits like this. You sit, you spend the time, I mean, I, I walk away from, with some deals sometimes, there's no way that that deal could ever be ruined. Why? Because they did, we didn't even, we, we entered in, not into a great deal, but we entered, that, per, that client got impacted by the Holy Spirit in that moment. He received, um, he received salvation. I've seen clients um, receive Jesus. I've seen clients healing and their families taking place. When you are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, there is something that, that God moves on the inside of you to do to where you can actually shift environments. You can actually turn things around. You are the answer people are waiting for in this season right now. Sometimes it's really good. Invite them to church. Invite them to church. But you, right where you're at, in the place that you are working right now, you are, the, you are the Jesus they are waiting for in that moment in time. Amen. You are the one that God is waiting for to bring revival right where people are at, whether it be in the grocery store, whether it be at your job, whether it be in your school, whether it be in your college university, whether it be a high school or whatever. There is something. You are the revivalist. You are the reformer that God wants to release into this community right here and right now. If you believe that, say amen. Are you guys all with me? So what attracts the Holy Spirit? There's a couple of things that attract the Holy Spirit into, into our everyday lives. Number one, hunger. We need to continue to, um, to create a hunger for the things of the Holy Spirit. Hunger attracts the Holy Spirit. One thing to, to note is whatever you feed on the most is what you're the hungriest for. I don't know if hungriest is a word, but I just made it up. <laughs> Whatever you feed on determines what you are hungry for. And so a spiritual posture that we all need to have in our daily life is a posture that just says, I need God, period. The world we live in today, the chaos, all, all the stuff, is that I just need to live in a posture that I need to be surrendered to. To God, I need more and more of God. You may be have been walking with Jesus for many years of all your life. Guess what? There's always more. There's always more. So, David, well, I've been in church all my life. I've heard every message. I've there's always more. There's always from faith to faith to glory to glory. There's always more. There's more that He wants to do in you. There's more that He wants to do through you. There's always more. Hunger. Is what hunger is a posture of humility and surrender. If you're not hungry, I'm good. I got it. I've heard all of Pastor Marcus and Pastor Joel's messages. I'm good. 
but there's always more. The reason why there's always more is because God wants to do more in you, and God is always doing more in them. God is doing more in this church. There's more that God wants to continue to do through this church, through you, and through the leadership of this house. There's always more. How do we step into that more is through hunger. How, what, how, do, we, how do we keep ourselves hungry for the right things? We keep ourselves hungry for the, in the, for the right things by feeding ourselves with the right things. So if all you're doing is feeding yourself on the things of the world, then you're going to be hungry for the things of the world. Um, I, I like hot wings, buffalo hot wings. I'm a, I'm a wing guy. I know we just went from Holy Spirit to wings. Um, I, I'm a wing guy. Um, I like pluckers. I don't know if you guys have been at pluckers. I, I think I've signed up for their membership multiple times. They, they clip the thing every time. Like, oh, you've been here. Right. Um, but I, I'm always, every time I, I, I go have wings, because I, my wife tells me you need to back it off a little bit. Um, but I have a hunger for it. Same thing with, you know, if, I, if I'm always watching the golf channel all the time, nothing wrong with the golf channel. Actually, I believe God loves the golf channel. <laughs> I th- I, you know. But if you just keep being consumed with that or, or even the, the news outlets or social media, I mean, na- name, your, name your thing that always is driving you to that. Fill fill in the blank. It could be food. It could be media. It could be sports. It could be, and and there's nothing wrong with those things. So I don't want you to give the idea, well, God is against hot wings. He's not. He loves them. He created them. (laughs) Or he's against the golf. Like, no, no, no. It's just your measurement of what you're feeding yourself. If you find yourself where you're always feeding the things of the world more than you are feeding yourself with God's word or more than you are in his presence through worship or more than you are surrounding yourself with like-minded people instead of weird people. Here's what I'm trying to say. There's nothing wrong. You, You can only influence people of the world when God is filling you with his word. I surround myself, I'm surrounded with people who are far from God all the time. They cuss, they all, I mean, all kinds of stuff. But he said, be in the world, not of the world. How do you make sure that there is a differentiating point with you not stepping over the line, becoming like the world versus being in it? It's making sure you are keeping your hunger in the right order. You're keeping your hunger for the things of God, and you're not allowing your hunger to, to, to overcompensate for the things of the world. That is how you can be in the world and not of the world. That's how you can influence the world and still be used by God to bring the revival and reformation that are in the spaces of influence that you lead in so you are, are not compromised by it. Matthew 5 verse 6 says, Blessed are those who thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled who thirst for righteousness we have to stay hungry for the things of god james 4 verse 8 says draw near to god and he will draw near to you who draws first you or god you do well if god will just show up maybe you need to you need to press in you need to draw in first that's why the most important time of your day most important part of your day is probably the first 10 to 20 to 30 minutes of your day, just spending time in the word of God, worshiping, declaring his promises over your life, over your family, over your children, declaring the promises of God over your job, over your workplace, praying for your coworkers, just begin to speak speak life, speak hope into every direction that, imp- that impacts you. You don't need to pray for three hours every day or read the Bible for three hours every day. No one can do that. But just taking these little, like what I call 
power moments, power day moments. All right, I'm going to read these two chapters. I'm just going to speak life for the next five minutes over every person I come in contact over that I know I'm going to come in contact with today. I'm going to pray over my family. Lord, fill my car as I am driving to work. Lord, fill my office space as I'm there. Or if you're working from home, Lord, fill my home office. Fill my Zoom link. <laughs> however, however you do business, however you, however you do that, Lord, fill this space. Just take a few minutes every day and watch what God not only does in you, but watch what he will do through you in your day, in your week, in your month, and watch the supernatural of the Holy Spirit be able to move and operate at a higher level than you've ever, ever anticipated. I'm telling you, this is the great advantage. This is your great competitive advantage. And he will guide you, he will counsel you, he will comfort you, and he will move you into all truth. What's the second thing that attracts the Holy Spirit? It's unity. Unity attracts the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter one, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they all came together in one accord, under one mission, under one vision, under one leader. And they all came together with the purpose to launch the greatest day in world history, to launch the greatest thing in world history, the local church. Today is the birthday of the greatest movement in world history, the church. And it, and it started by all of them coming together in unity. Now, let me just stop real quick right here because I, I need to say this. Because it feels like over the last few years, We've been lectured by the world and by religious people on what unity is. And I just want to go ahead and say there is a difference between biblical unity and worldly unity. There is a difference between godly unity and ungodly unity. There is a difference between godly division and ungodly division. So what do you mean? Well, there's a such thing as godly division? Yes, there is. The Holy Spirit is attracted when people come together in unity who are pursuing righteousness, who are standing on the full go who are sitting on the full counsel of God's word, who is Jesus. He is the word that became flesh, that dwelt among us. He is attracted when we are united around one thing so sometimes in in the business world when they start using words of unity and all this kind of stuff i start asking questions what are we unifying around what are what are you wanting me to come in agreement with because that 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 means a lot because i'm in austin And I, I, I take an axe very boldly in the corporate world to all the woke demons in Austin. <laughs> and I, 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 just, I just do it, okay? Because if someone doesn't step up and speak truth and love, then who will? That's why we're there as the church, as the body. We are the ecclesia church. We are called to go into every sphere of culture and shift it, even if it makes people awkward for five minutes. So there's other things like, you know, corporate things that they push and they want you to do get this and get trained in that and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't agree. I will not unify with that. They had me attend one of these things and I went full on confronting in love the, the teacher that was trying to push this kind of stuff. And everyone was looking around like going, they, like, the, the crowd, the, 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 all the employees were on my side. But nobody was doing it. After that time, the whole training got shut down and was never brought back to the, to the company again. Because someone had, in love, speaking truth, someone had to say something. 
What is unity? Unity is being in alignment with what the Bible says. Unity is being in alignment with the words of Jesus in the full counsel of God's word, not just the parts that your flesh likes. In Galatians 3, verse 23, it says, There's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave or free, there's neither male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. That's unity. We just defined it right there. I can come in an agreement with that. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we have to make sure that we are, we are, um, we are having a full understanding on what unity is so we can walk in it in full understanding and be empowered by the Spirit to, to be able to um, be aligned with righteousness but also confront what is wrong in error. Just because someone waves the banner of unity does not mean it's godly. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and it's active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. This is your sword. And what does it do? What does this sword do? The sword is dividing. There's that word again. There is, this, there is a godly division. What causes the godly division? Your sword. Jesus actually said, he goes, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Because he is the sword. He is the word of God. The word that became flesh. He is the sword. Your sword divides what is soul, what is just emotion, versus what is spirit. There's a lot of emotion that goes on in our world today. How can you tell the difference between what is emotion and what is actually truth? It's the sword that divides it. And so as we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit, I want, I want us to kind of think about the prayer life that he has called us to live. And I'm going to skip a few things. I, uh, I put down a lot of notes, and usually how God uses me when I go into places, I just throw everything on the, on the ceiling, and then I kind of pick and choose. Okay, I feel this. I need to, I'll do that. Okay, that's just how I do. A lot of people are very more kind of more structured than I am. I just throw everything on the ceiling. I'm like, okay, one, two, and three. We're going to go with that. That's just kind of how I do it. Okay, I, I'm kind of different that way. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like Pastor Marcus, yes. Love it, brother, love it. I thought I was the only one, I'm glad. Um, there's a person in um, back, um, if you've probably heard of the man, his name is um, uh, John Knox. He was a reformer in Scotland, part of the Reformation. John Knox, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm a, I love the story of John Knox. My wife and I were actually going to be in Scotland next month, and we're uh, going to have, um, have the opportunity to actually visit the home of John Knox. John Knox was known in the nation of Scotland because of his prayer life. Not because of his big crusades. Not because of a big ministry. But he made a big impact in the nation of Scotland. He actually scared the government of Scotland with his prayers. He prayed 13 years for the, for the nation in Scotland. His famous quote was, which I'm sure you've heard before, Give me Scotland lest I die. That was his quote. This quote was inspired from Romans 10.1 when the Apostle Paul prayed to God for Israel that they might be saved. What if we had some reformers and revivalists, part of Crossroads Church, that rose up and said, give me America unless I die. That was that's being inspired from Romans 10.1 when the Apostle says, praying to God that America shall be saved. He was known for his prayer life 
the Mary, Mary the Queen of Scots said, I am more afraid of John Knox's prayers than I am of the armies of England and France that may invade my country at any moment. Why was she afraid of his prayers? Because she knew it was the prayers of John Knox that sparked and gave fuel to the Reformation in Scotland, causing causing a move of God among the people, leaving Catholicism and accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The government was afraid of one man's prayers. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16, that the prayers of a righteous man is powerful and effective. What are your prayers? Scary. What are your prayers scary? Well, I'm just a simple guy. I'm just a simple woman. I'm just a, you know, we're just like, no, no, no. You're a reformer and a revivalist in the kingdom of God. You, 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 God has, you may be a mom, you may be a dad, husband, wife, raising two, three, four, five kids. But it's not about, it's not about what you are doing, but it's about also what, who you are raising in your home. And you could be raising up future generals and reformers and revivalists in your home today that could change the course of a nation in a city. I want to talk about this really quickly here, and then, I, then we'll close. We talk, we've said a lot about the, about the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit today, the presence of the Holy Spirit. But there is a prayer language there is a prayer language that he has for you that you can use. There's a difference between the gift of tongues and your personal prayer language. I'm not gonna go into all of that right now. But for some of you, you're so used to praying out of your intellect and never praying in the realm of the spirit. It's kind of like, I have these props here. Kind of like you're praying with a screwdriver. Have you ever put together any type of furniture or any type of thing, and a screw gets gets uh, can't, and then you start then you're gonna like strip the screw because it's not going in quite quite right. That's a Christian trying to pray with no power. But then you have the power drill. When you put that in, it goes in a lot more effective. Why pray, why pray in the Holy Spirit? Because there's times where I don't know what to pray. There's times where I don't even know where to begin. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to pray. But sometimes I get, like, I need to pray. Sometimes I, get, I wake up in the middle of the night. It's like, I don't know. I, I just need, I need to pray. Romans 8 verse 26 says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know that we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes through us with groans that cannot be expressed. And and, um, Jude 1 verse 20 says, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. Let's not make praying in the Holy Spirit weird. It's not weird. It's normal. The Holy Spirit is not weird. Say, well, David, I've had people and they were like really weird type Pentecostal people. Well, well, they were weird. The Holy Spirit is not weird. Some people get caught up in emotion because they haven't learned how to stand on the word of God dividing between soul and spirit. You need both the word and the spirit to, to move and work together. You just stand on the full counsel of God's word while also being led and letting the power of the Holy Spirit move through you. Some of you are praying. Some of you get together and you pray with some people, and they just pray out of their intellect, and they're just like, Lord, we just thank you for getting us this. And they're praying like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. And there's no authority. 
There's no power. It's not about a volume thing, but it's about a spiritual utterance that God can give you to push through things and you can accelerate things in the realm of the spirit. By praying, think about the screwdriver and the power drill. Being able to pray in the Holy Spirit to build yourself up, being able to pray in the Holy Spirit to, to, to be able to pray during times when you don't know what to pray. Say, Lord, I just need to pray right now. Sometimes there's things, maybe things happening at your job and at your work, and you, you know you just need to pray. You just pray in the Holy Spirit under your breath. I'm not saying you need to go around your office, you know, like waving a big thing or whatever. No, don't, don't do that. But begin to utilize the things that God has given you through his Holy Spirit so you can be more effective, more powerful, and be able to bring change, shift atmospheres, and see his power move in other people's lives. And then they'll begin to ask you, there's something different about you. There's something like, I want to know more about your personal life. I want to know more about your faith. I want to know more. There's something There's something unique about you on your life. The greatest evangelistic tools that you have at your disposal right now is the work ethic of excellence, and it's the power of the Holy Spirit. You intertwine those two together, people will start coming to you. Why? Because you know, I've been to over 30 nations of the world. It doesn't matter what the, ethni- um, the ethnicity it doesn't matter what the color of their skin, it doesn't matter what the nationality, the culture I'm in, every person, no matter American or if you're in Africa or if you're in India or if you're in Indonesia or if you're in Latin America, every person is attracted to the power of the Holy Spirit. Every person, every nationality. That's why I can get up in any pulpit in any country in the world and, and be led by why, and they're attracted to it. So there's something, there's, I want more of that. I want more of what you have. There's something more. I want that. Why? Because who cares about skin color? It's about Jesus. Amen. It's about Jesus. There's so much more I could say today, but I just want to leave you with these two simple things, and that is develop greater hunger and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit more. Just begin to do it more, five minutes a day. Read the word five minutes a day. Read the word for five minutes. Pray in the Holy Spirit for five minutes. Just begin to do that. Begin to enhance your hunger pains for the things of the spirit in this world. And and you will be a walking Pentecost in every environment that you step your foot into. Let me pray over you real quick. Father, we just thank you so much for Crossroads Church. We thank you so much for, for Pastors Marcus and Natalie. We thank you that... That they're just not building a church, but they're raising up leaders. They're raising up reformers and revivalists to shift a territory. I keep on hearing the word territory. I know you're in Seguin, but there's more territory for you to advance in. There's more places for you to take territory in. There's leaders in this place that God is raising up. I love, Pastor Marcus, how you are such an empowering pastor. How you believe in people when no one else believed in them. That's the kind of heart that you have. And God is going to use that to expand your tent, to advance territory, to raise up leaders, and to destroy the works of the devil in this land. Crossroads Church, we love you so much. God bless you. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.